Hello and welcome to Coffee and a Conversation with Capital News. I'm Jacqueline Jelano and I'm joined here today with Bryce Tippy, who is the Green Party candidate for the Kelowna Centre riding. So Bryce, before we begin today, I do have a serious question for you. Of course. How do you take your coffee? Um, I just take it with cream or milk. I'm not picky. Sometimes I even had a black coffee this morning, so. Oh, well, yeah. we can accommodate that perfectly. All right. Perfect. Well, let's get started then. So. Okay, now that we've got our coffee, um, I would like to know what is it that motivated you to run in this election? So you have a background in political studies, you've done all sorts of different things um, working in the community, but why politics, why this election, why the BC Green Party? Well, I just didn't see any, any party or candidate running really s talking about the really tangible issues and the, the tangible solutions that could be provided through like realistic policy applications. I felt like it was just like partisan politics as usual where the, either parties were over promising um, and it just it didn't seem like there was actually any solutions being put forth that would like actually improve the lives of, lives of British Columbians. Um, so, talking about issues, what do you think are the main issues that are going to be impacting your riding? Colonel so, Center? I mean, I think if we talk about like specific, because I, I have one idea of what I think is causing, like affecting all of the issues that are impacting, specifically, obviously, people are concerned about housing, people are concerned about health care, the drug addiction crisis, climate change. Those are specific issues, but I do think that there's an underlying thing that's attributing to all of this, and it's... It's a lack of accountability and transparency in politics right now. Um, the quality of policy within British Columbia and federally in Canada as a whole has just decreased over the past couple decades, and it's led to like ongoing crises that we're not seeing tangible, tangible improvements in. Right, and people are disillusioned. People have basically lost faith in our democracy and the institutions, and then that's why we're seeing populist uh, like movements start to build up. Right. And I, I do understand the grievance that people ha have all across the ideological spectrum. I just don't always agree with the like necessarily the solutions that they provide. Mm -hmm. So, if elected, what would you do to to address that? How how would you break down those barriers? Well, because I right now we basically expect um, politicians to police themselves, and I don't think that's working very well. Um, so, I would actually like to see uh, an ethics commission be empowered and a code of ethics be instituted. So. Conflicts of interest would be monitored, um, lying to like blatantly lying, and that could be investigated. Where you could see if they say they're going to do something, and then they propose policies that have the absolute opposite effect, that could be investigated. And so then this ethics commission could investigate, collect stuff, like really look into it, and then if somebody's found to have violated that code of ethics, a recall election in that specific riding for that specific politician would be recalled. Mm, okay. Well, that's a really um, interesting, I think, like thought-provoking mm -hmm. concept. Um, are there any other uh, countries that have done something similar that you're looking to as a model, or yeah, is so this something that you've learned through your education? Well, it's a little bit of column A from column B. Like I've thought of basically because you want to be able to have politicians, politicians be policed, but you want also want to make sure that it can't be weaponized by other parties against certain stuff, which would compromise the democracy as well. Um, a very good example of where this kind of happened is in the UK, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, was found to have violated COVID policies that he um, put in place himself, and then he lied about it. And so they, the party investigated it, and then so they found that he had actually lied. So then a recall election was going to be called for him, so he resigned because mm -hmm. he kind of saw the writing on the wall. So there are similar countries that, to us that actually have these things instituted that can actually make politicians accountable, but we don't have that here. We're, where it's dependent on the election cycle, but like d depending on how the news, people don't remember what happened two years ago, right? So it's better to have these things be um, dealt with by the public more on the immediate basis, and then that way politicians can be held accountable. And then this way we get people who are actually trying to promise things that are actually tangibly going to be improved, not only worrying about results that look good for campaign season, but don't actually have like long-term impacts to solving these issues, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So speaking about issues, a lot of voters want to know what your core beliefs are and what you're going to bring mm -hmm. to, you know, Victoria on a daily basis, what you're going to yeah. bring to the ledge. One of the biggest uh, 
largest parts of your platform is access to mental health and addictions yeah. care. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit about that and what your philosophies are um, just in regards to those specific issues? Yeah, totally. I mean, so basically healthcare right now is so dysfunctional. I mean, most people don't have access to primary care physicians. Mental health has been completely cannibalized resources wise. Like people, interior health, their mental health support like um, like area is completely overwhelmed. People can't see counselors, um, and then you force to pay out of pocket. And there's another conversation that people aren't even having is that most mental health conditions aren't treated first in line by like pharmaceuticals. They're actually treated through like like psychology or counseling, right? Mm -hmm. But we have it backwards that people are prescribing like psychiatry is covered by in like our MSP. And, so, and then now we're including like pharmacare to pay for these pharmaceuticals, then a lot of the time these aren't the first line of treatment for mental health conditions, right? There's only actually a very few, a handful of mental health conditions where meds are the first line of treatment. So we kind of have it backwards. So for me, I would like to see it expanded where psychology would be covered underneath of it. And we'd have an increase in another reason why I think that this is, um, we're having, because we have a shortage of workers. So we actually have to have proper consultation with the healthcare industry as well and talk to these people and say, hey, why are you burnt out? Like, why are you leaving? Mm -hmm. Right? And because that's another conversation that we need to have. I feel like there's a lot of top down governance mm -hmm. and not a lot of people really listening to like, the empirical like data or talk to the people who actually have expertise in the field. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really interesting. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the issues in the area, but I want to mm -hmm. know what is it? You've lived in Kelowna, moved away, and you had to come back. What is it about Kelowna that you love so much, specifically in your riding Kelowna Center? Like, what's your favorite thing to do in Kelowna Center? What's the attraction? Well, I mean it's a good balance. I grew up in Revelstoke. I've spent a lot of time in Kelowna. We'd always come here because to shop at the mall or something. I'd always come and visit as a kid. And like I used to think Kelowna was this giant metropolis. I don't think that anymore, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's this nice, it's a th small town, but like it's got a good community. It's got good people. It's beautiful. And I think that there's so much potential here and it's growing and it's exciting. It's like one of the fastest growing um, communities within British Columbia right now. Mm -hmm. And I think there's so much potential and we just need good proper representation. And I feel like I could provide that if I won, right? So um, yeah, I mean, I, I love Kelowna, I love it here and I love the interior. Well, that's perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and thanks for drinking coffee with me yeah. and having a conversation, answering some questions. Awesome. Thank you for having me.